everybody. Welcome back to the Lake Effect Garden. So I'm home. I'm home from my little beach trip and I'm really happy to be home. I had a wonderful time. I really did. You know, the sun was hot and the breeze off the lake was cool and the company was amazing. So it was just the ticket, but I'm not going to lie. As soon as I pulled in, I left all my luggage in my car, came straight back into the garden and I knew I was missing it. I really did. And things are looking really nice. Things are really beginning to change and, and take shape. And it's amazing how it can, in just a few days, transform. So, happy to be home. So before I left, I actually made a video. And it was long. It was really long. In fact, it was so long that I was having huge issues uploading it. So I kind of threw my hands up in the air and said, I'm just going to deal with this when I get back type of thing. And, you know, a couple days away, I kind of mulled it over. And then I decided, you know what, it was long. And although sometimes a long video can be very informative, I also feel like long videos can sometimes can be boring. So what I did was... I'm going to break it down into three smaller segments because there were three major things that I did in that video. So that's why I'm here. I'm I'm kind of I had an introduction and, you know, closing comments type of thing made, but um I'm going to give you guys kind of the smaller version of it. So, so the footage that you're going to be seeing for this one and we're going to call this part 1. Okay? This is going to be all about sowing seeds. And the seeds that I'm sowing are going to be for the polytunnel. Okay. I had mentioned that a while ago. I think when I did my polytunnel video, I was gonna say, okay, because I'm gonna set I'm gonna sow some seeds and then you know I can walk you through that, blah blah blah. So that's where we are. That's where I am. This is what this video is gonna be all about, is sowing the seeds that I'm going to be using in the grow bags in the polytunnel. So I'm going to not really, but to take a quick costume change, seeing as how uh, this was footage from a few days ago. And I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. And I'll see you on the other side. And um, yeah, here we go. The first packet of seeds I'm looking at, and I have a couple of them, are cabbage seeds. And I have two varieties that I'm going to be planting today. One cabbage is called Danish Ballhead. Okay, and this one is about a 90 day from sowing to crop. So I'm going to give that a go. And then the other one is called Excalibur. And this is a hybrid. And I usually do not grow hybrids in my garden. I'm strictly an heirloom gardener for the fact that I love the old varieties, first and foremost. Secondly, I love saving seed. That's kind of my thing. I try to save as much seed as possible. So I tend not to, to plant the hybrid seeds only because I can't collect them. Okay, I mean, I could if I let this bolt and, you know, go to seed. I suppose I could, but the seed that comes from a hybrid plant is not going to be true to the mother plant. So it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of misses the whole point when it comes to trying to be as self-sufficient as possible. So I'm gonna try those two varieties. We'll see how those go. I'm also going to be planting a number of lettuces. And I have, oh wow, I've got five varieties. And some of these varieties I didn't get a chance to put into the ground this year. So I'll be interested to see how they do. The first one is from MI Gardener, okay? And it's a tree lettuce, a tree lettuce. So this is kind of, this is, I mean, the quintessential cut and come again variety. So it's supposed to grow insanely tall, okay? And how tall is they? how tall are they get? I don't think there's a, oh, it's also known as asparagus lettuce or spring tower. <laughs> That's great. It's an Asian green and it's used for stir fries and soup. Plant grows upright like lettuce and creates a stalk much like lettuce going to seed. However, it is not bitter and milky like lettuce. So that's very interesting. So I'll be interested to see how this one goes. 
I did try sowing it once and the seeds did not germinate. So I'm going to give it a try again, but that's really interesting. And then I have a romaine variety that's called Vivian. Okay. And I have a variety that is called Rouge de Verre. Okay. And I'm looking, I'm looking at the, the harvest, the harvest time here, 60 days. Okay. This one is called All Year Round. Well, I guess I'll be the judge of that, won't I? Hmm. Okay. And I would treat these like cut and come again, all of these lettuce varieties. And then the last one is Butter Crunch, which I do have in the garden already. And I adore it. It's delicious. Okay, so those are my lettuce plants that I'm going to be planting. And then I've got a couple of varieties of arugula, or as my British friends would call it, rocket. So I'm going to give those a go. And then I'm going to be going with some Swiss chard. And this variety is called Lucillus. So it's very similar to the Ford Hook Giant that I currently have growing in my brassica bed. So, and those are really, really big meaty stalks. And I feel like the big meaty stalks would be something that would kind of hold up a little bit better under colder conditions. That remains to be seen though because I've never had the ruby red variety or the magenta sunset variety actually work for me. This is the first year. So I don't know, they might last outside during the whole winter. That remains to be seen. And then I'll be going with the lacinato kale that I have in the garden currently. Okay. So that's kind of like your Nero de Toscana, I think my, my British friends call it. And then of course, some purple sproutings, uh, purple sprouting broccoli. So yeah, this will be fun and it's going to be very well protected so that my little bunny friends don't decide that they're going to make a meal out of it. And then I'm going to be growing a couple of root veg. I'm going to be continuing with my Detroit dark red beet. And then the American purple top rutabaga. Or if you're posh, swede. Okay. So that's, that's it. Those are the things I'm going to be growing from seed. Okay couple things that I will also be growing from seed that it may work or it may not. I'm going to try some cucumbers. Okay. I would love to extend my cucumber season. I'm not going to lie. I would really, really, because usually once the weather starts to get cold, the plants start to slow down. So if I can maintain heat within that tunnel and continue to grow cucumbers, maybe through September, even October, I'd be over the moon. I really, really would, because I just can't get enough. The varieties I have here is one is called Long Green Improved, and the other one is called Delicatesse. Okay, and they're both heirloom varieties. There is one more plant that I'm going to be giving a go in the polytunnel, and I don't have seeds for them. Well, I do, but I'm not planting seeds for them. I am going to be doing tomatoes. Now, as part of this video, I'm going to be spending a little bit of time in the garden maintaining and taking care of the tomato plants that I currently have. My um, indeterminate varieties currently are starting to send out suckers and they need to be tied up. But the suckers on some of them are starting to get really, really long. They are long suckers. So I'm going to prune those out and I'm going to root them on. And they root really, really fast, which is beautiful. And then I'm going to plant them on in the polytunnel to see if I can extend my tomato season as well. The same thing kind of happens here. You get into September and things start to slow down a little bit. If I can extend that, that would be amazing. The idea of September having fresh tomatoes and fresh cucumbers and fresh greens, that would be such a beautiful thing. So. That's where we're headed, my friends, and this isn't going to be a terribly long video, at least I hope not, but you know I have a tendency to prattle on, so. All right, so here we are at the potting bench, and 
This potting bench I designed specifically to go around this old kitchen sink that I had on hand. The sink was originally in my house and I found one that fit a lot better in my house. And I know I keep talking about the interior of my house and you know, the tour is coming soon. It will. But anyways, so I took the sink out and I held onto it thinking maybe I'll use it somewhere else. Maybe someone else I know might be able to upcycle it, kept it. And then when I did the interior of the shed, I thought to myself, that would make the perfect place to store my compost. So that's where it went. And I really, really like it. It's really deep. So I don't make an absolute destructive mess in here. So I've got this about halfway filled with some good seed sowing compost. What I'm also going to be using today are these three inch pots. And I've got my seeds over here that I'm going to be sowing. I've got a Sharpie. I've got my plastic labels and I'm very much a anti-plastic person, but if I do get plastic of any kind, I use it and use it and use it until it degrades and then I recycle it. So nothing goes to waste. So these are mostly from bedding flowers that I had purchased along the way. And some of these have been reused. So that says pole bean. Okay, so I've used these before, but the other side's good. So I'm gonna label on the other side. And then I have a tray and I'm gonna put all of my um, sown seeds in this tray and they'll go into the greenhouse. So I'm gonna start off now. Everything that I'm gonna be planting in here will be multi-sown. And that means that I'm just going to kind of sprinkle on the seeds to the top of the compost in the hopes that I get a lot of germination. And then once that happens, I'll be able to prick out the seedlings and either pop them on or just directly put them in the grow bags. That's the plan at least. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm going to be sowing are these delicatesse cucumbers. Okay, I'm not gonna go crazy with see sowing these, but I, like I said, I do wanna make sure that I'm going to get some kind of germination on this. So I'm gonna plant maybe about five seeds. And if I end up with all five, amazingly great, very happy. If I end up with two, I'll still be happy, okay? I just wanna make sure that there's some kind of germination that's happening here. Let's just say that multi-sowing is a great insurance policy, okay? So I'm just going to kind of spread these out. And when it comes to squash seeds of any kind, it's been said that it's always kind of important to either put them on their sides or put them facing up and down, but not flat. So you don't want to put them flat onto the compost because they have a tendency to rot, okay? So that's what I've done. And I'm gonna take my label. Let's see, what does this one say? This was Verbena bonariensis. Originally, it was thyme, English thyme. And now it's going to be cucumber delicatesse. Okay. So there we go, cuke. The problem sometimes with some of these labels that they're so small that you, you have to, you almost have to abbreviate them. So I'm putting my label in and it's gonna go in the tray, okay? I'm gonna do the same with the cucumber long green improved. All right, so I'm gonna get my compost in here. All right. Give it a good bang. That helps to settle the soil, by the way, which is nice. Always make sure that when you're planting in compost that your compost is not wet, but definitely has some moisture to it, okay? That way, when you go to water them, the water is not gonna pool up on the top, okay? If you put really, really dry compost in the pot and you sow your seed and you try watering it, everything is gonna kind of float to the top. and the seeds might do the same, and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that the compost is 
evenly moist, and then that shouldn't be a problem. Once you water it, the water will filter through as it should. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna plant about, okay, well, six came out on that one. So I'm gonna do that. All right. I had a couple more varieties of cucumber that I was kind of, you know, vacillating about. I wasn't sure exactly which ones I wanted to do. And one of them is called Diva. <laughs> and apparently it's very prolific and a smaller plant. But I've tried those in the past, actually. I've grown them in the past. I wanted to try something different. So these are different. Oh, so let's see. This one says summer squash. I don't know if I should use this label. I think it might have some bad mojo or something. The state of my summer squash. Okay, that's the Sicilian in me right there. I don't want to curse myself. Okay, so this is a clean one. And so we have cuke. Long, green, improved. Put in your label, put it on the tray. Okay, I'll do a few more. I'm not gonna make you guys <laughs> endure hours and hours of seed sowing. Although I have to say, it is very, very relaxing work. And I'm also getting used to the idea of not having music playing behind me probably because I'm starting to get used to the sound of my own voice when it comes to making these videos. So what do we have next here? The American Purple Top Rutabaga. And I just love rutabaga. I really do. And it's one of those vegetables that I kind of didn't want anything to do with <laughs> growing up. And we make it every single year. My mother makes it every single year for Thanksgiving. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna suck it up and give it a try. I couldn't believe it. And I didn't realize how much it tastes and smells like cabbage, which I'm, I'm a cabbage fanatic. I love me some cabbage. So I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, so for the rutabaga, <clears throat> Like any brassica seeds, they've got that kind of small pelleted size uh, seed. So instead of me painstakingly putting one at a time, I'm just going to lightly sprinkle these on top of my compost, just making sure that I don't put too many. Okay, and those look pretty well spread out. I'm just going to give it a top off. What I need to get me some is those sifters those compost sifters those look really really cool i was thinking to myself well you know <laughs> i've got flower sifters maybe those would work you know never tried it i think i think i don't think that would work very well but I'll give it a go one of these days all right that's a big one what do we got here spinach salad sensation once again the Italian in me is saying, nope, your spinach didn't come to anything. Don't use that label. How about this one? Okay. Begonia. So this is rutabaga. And I'm not going to go ahead and put the variety on it because it's the only variety that I grow. So, And I've got that all listed. So there we go. I'm going to get on with doing the rest of these. If you guys want to go grab a cup of tea. Check your email, water your plants, totally up to you. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you all of the, of the multi-sown pots that I've done. Okay. <clears throat> this is the last one. Which is just as well because I'm running low on seed compost. So I need to get me some more of that. You know, oddly enough, a lot of the seed compost that I have is not purchased. Since seedlings, well, seeds in general, don't really need a great deal of nutrition to get established, um, I will take potted plants or compost from last year, and I will use that as my seed starting compost 
instead of going out and buying like a specialty seeds, you know, seed sowing compost blend. And you know what, honestly, obviously the, the nutrients have, have been kind of depleted and everything, but I think it works absolutely fine. I've never had a problem with using old compost. So yeah, always looking for a way to reuse everything. Waste not, want not. That is like my MO. Okay, this is the last one. I grab my label and this cabbage is called, what was it called? Oh, Danish Ballhead. So I have eight three-inch pots in this tray, and then I've got eight three-inch pots in another tray. Now, I'm only using these trays to kind of keep them all together, but what I'm going to do is I have a big aluminum roasting pan. I've got two of them, okay? Or as my, as my British friends would say, I think it's aluminium. Aluminium? Anyways, we say aluminum here. So I've got two big roasting trays that I had left over from a party. And instead of using it again, which I typically will do, I'm actually, I usually, I usually use them for seedlings. So what I'll do is I'll give, give these a good water in, and then I will place just the slightest bit of water at the bottom just to keep the moisture up. These are going to go inside of my greenhouse, okay, with the vents and the door open. Otherwise, I don't, I, I can't make any promises as to what would happen, but it's really, really warm in there. I just went in there to kind of make some room because it's a bit of a tip right now. And the thermometer read 110 degrees, which is ridiculous. So I opened up the vents, I opened up the door, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. I will leave all of those open, okay? And the staging is high enough where I don't have to worry about critters coming in and getting it. Although that field mouse is still somewhere. Anyways. As soon as I see anything green popping up, I'm going to whip those out and I'm going to put them in a cooler place. I might put them in a table in the polytunnel. I might, I've got a couple of little card tables that are set up in the garden, TV tables, I should say. I might put them on there just so they're out and the temperature's not, you know, extremely hot because I don't want to, especially if these brassicas, I don't want them to wilt. So that's where we're going to head next. We're going to head over to the greenhouse and uh, get these puppies rested. Before I do that though, I'm going to water them in. Okay? Very important that you water them in first and then you can put them where you're going to, you know, kind of nurse them. So, that's where we're heading now, friends. So there we go. That's that's the seed sowing that I've done. This is my first seed sowing video.
growing and craving to grow and of course at that point the growing season will be over but you know whatever I can plan for next year so very excited so that's it guys the next video it's already made um, so I'm just gonna be kind of you know rolling it out maybe in a, a day or two and it's all going to be about tomatoes so hope you guys liked this and I'll be back for more in a couple of days and I hope you guys are all well and I will see you all very, very soon.